My name is Kathy Gelso, and um, I am going to, this meeting is recorded just for purposes of having to uh, allow other students to watch this, this afterwards. I'd like to start um, with introductions and uh, then just talk a little bit about our undergraduate nursing program and a typical kind of a template for the coursework that you would take as an undergraduate student and then just leave a lot of time open for you to ask questions. So um, I'm going to kind of start maybe Annalisa would you mind starting and just we'll go right through everyone can um, introduce themselves and what I would be interested in is your hometown and um, if you don't mind, will everybody just mute your mic while someone else is talking? That would be great. So, Annalisa, tell me your hometown, your anything. I am from Phillipsburg, New Jersey. Um, I go to Warren Tech, which is in Washington, New Jersey, so we're right outside of Pennsylvania. Okay, thank you. What's your high school? Warren Tech, it's Warren in Warren County Technical School. It's in Washington, New Jersey. Okay, thank you. Bridget? Uh, hi, I'm from Manalapan, New Jersey, and I go to Modern Day Prep High School in Middletown. Thank you, welcome. Thank Joselina? You. I'm from Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania, and I go to Coughlin High School. Okay, thank you, welcome. Caitlin? I'm from Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania, and I go to Hanover area. Welcome. Delilah? Uh, I think you're on mute, Delilah. If you could unmute your mic just to uh, introduce yourself. Okay, we'll come back. Uh, Deanna? Hi, I'm Deanna and I'm from Manalpin. Where are you from, Deanna? I didn't hear you. I'm from Manalpin. Where is that? Give me some here there. It's in New Jersey. What county? Manalpin? What do you mean? I'm sorry. Like, so I grew up in New Jersey and I grew up in Bergen County, but there's a lot of. Oh, Monmouth County. Monmouth. Oh, okay. I got you now. Thank you. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you. Delilah, are you able to join us or able to hear me? I know your mic is on mute. Okay, um, that's all right. So again, I welcome those of you who are here. Uh, this is really our first virtual um, open house. And I wanna say that there's good and bad with these virtual meetings. Um, the good thing is that we have the technology at least to come together to see one another to have an informal conversation uh, the bad thing is that i've done this for years in person at misericordia and i always enjoy uh you know a face-to-face -face conversation but here we are and um so i'm briefly going to uh, tell you a little bit about myself and then i'm going to turn it over to my colleague brianne and just um, let her tell you a little bit about herself. So I am, um, I teach in the undergraduate program. I've been full time since 2007. And my area of interest or expertise, I guess you could say is medical surgical nursing. And uh, I've always loved med surge nursing. That's been my go to uh, happy place in the in the hospital setting. And I live in Dallas myself and my husband, uh, live with my husband and our three children are, are grown. My youngest is uh, graduated from Wilkes University a couple of years ago. And I have two older uh, children, one living in Wilkes-Barre and one living down towards Philadelphia in media. So um, yeah, with that, I'll, I'll let Brianne share a little bit about, uh, Brianne is new to our faculty, so we wanted to have 
a couple of faculty members here so that you could direct your questions towards uh, any specialty that we might be able to help you with. Hello, welcome to everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Flaherty and as Kathy just said, it is my first year teaching full time at Misericordia. I previously taught at um, an LPN program in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And so what's unique for me is I can speak to what it's like to be the new person on campus and Misericordia has just been a very welcoming environment, very comfortable. Everyone has been so accommodating and helpful. So I can speak to the environment of the university itself. Uh, my areas of interest, I would say, um, most of my teaching has been in peds um, with some med surge. I've also, with my clinical practice, done a lot of emergency room nursing. So that's always in my heart as well. Um, I have three young children. I have twins, three-year-old twins and a five-year-old son. And I live um, in Shavertown, Pennsylvania, which is right next door to Dallas. So I'm pretty close to campus as well. And, and so far, although it's been an adjustment because of COVID and everything distance, I've really loved um, my time here and I'm really enjoying teaching. Um, so I can tell you all that it's a very uh, welcoming and uh, family-like uh, environment at Misericordia. So it's nice to see you all, welcome. Thank you. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background and any of the uh, information that I share with you this morning will be available to you. I think there's a, a little packet that has the documents that we're sharing with you. So you can have access to these. Uh, I think they'll be sent to you from our admissions department. But uh, are you all, could you tell me where you're at in terms of um, making your decision, your final decision. I don't, or, or maybe your your juniors or seniors. I'm just kind of needing to get a little bit more information on on your level. Uh, Annalisa, are you a senior? Yeah, I'm a senior. And have you have you made your decision, first college? I haven't made my decision yet. I've been accepted. Um, here in other schools, but I'm kind of just waiting for the other ones so I can decide which one I want to go to. Okay, and um, what is, so you'll probably make, you, you, guys, you would probably be making a decision like by the end of the year or January, something like that. Yeah. Do you, are you involved in athletics? No. Okay, thank you. How about Joselina, you, have you made your decision? Um, so far, not really, but one of my top choices is Misericordia. Okay, thank you. How about Bridget? Um, I'm a senior, and I'm in the application process for a few schools, but my top choice is Misericordia. Okay, thank you. And Caitlin? I'm a senior, and I'm still deciding where I want to go. Gotcha. Okay, so um, what we we um, want to talk about, I'm going to try to just share this screen a little bit and see, um, let's see, uh, let's see if I can share this. Okay, are you able to see that? How to prepare for a nursing career? Not yet, nothing showing yet, Kathy. It's not, not showing, okay. Um, hmm. Let me try that one more time. Here we go. Hmm. Okay, so you're not seeing that, right? Um, uh, it looks, we're seeing your screen, but not the um, right. information that you. Okay, all right. Do you want me to see if I could bring it up quick? Let me see if I can. Yeah, see if you could pull up. I, was I don't know if it'll allow me to. Yeah. I wanted to pull up the template that um, kind of has the program plan. 
Yeah, it's not allowing me to share my okay. screen either. That's okay. Let, let me just do this very casually and talk about just preparing for your nursing career. And um, so some of, the, some of the skills that we're looking for in our, uh, in, in our students are things such as like leadership and strong organizational uh, and time management skills, people skills, patience, flexibility, and um, currently there's over 2.6 million registered nurses in the United States. And I'm sure that all of you have, uh, have gone or chosen to go into nursing for some particular reason, and it may be uh, that you have a family member in the field or that you have a particular desire to, um, to help others. And um, I guess what I'd like you to think about is in the next, um, you know, six months to consider doing volunteer work in a hospital if any of you um, have that opportunity. Does anyone volunteer at this point in time as, as a, an aid, like a candy striper or any kind of um, aid or helper in a healthcare setting? I was set up for it to do it over the summer, but because of the virus, it got canceled. So I don't really know what's going on with that at the moment. Right. And that's, you know, um, we, we always encourage volunteer opportunities. Of course, this has been an unusual scenario the last eight months. So we, I'm sure a lot of you haven't been able to. Um, you want to continue to keep that GPA up, okay? You have another semester left and you really want to maintain the quality GPA that you've been working for. Um, we... You all are aware that, you know, our program, our undergraduate program is a, is a four year program. And it is, um, once completed, the requirement to, to practice as a registered nurse um, involves taking a national uh, state board licensure exam. So, um, we, we encourage, we uh, hope that you all develop strong test-taking skills. So um, can I ask you just to share with us, you know, what brought you to the decision to say, I'm going to pursue nursing? Uh, I keep going to Annalisa first. I don't mean to do that, but it just, that's the way it shows up on the screen. Can you just tell me, tell me about yourself. Tell me how it is that you, you applied for the nursing program. You've been accepted. So we know that you're, you have solid grades, but tell us about what brings you to nursing. Um, for many, hold on, let me put my camera on. <laughs> For when I was younger, I watched my, I had a grandma who was very ill. She had Alzheimer's and an epilepsy. Mm. So I watched her in like nursing homes and in and out of hospitals. And I saw how much like the nurses meant to her and how much they were just like there to comfort her. And then years later, I was in a hospital after I had surgery and I, I had the nurses, I were so comforting. I just want to be like a comforting person and like there to help others. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Bridget. Anyone else, Jocelyn or Caitlin? Um, I'll go. So my family is just very involved in the medical field. My sister is going to PA school and my dad was a registered nurse. He was a pediatric psych RN. Um, and I just like, I've been really involved in like community service. So I really like helping people. And I always liked like my science classes. So then I just like got into like discovering about like nursing and I just decided to like pursue that. Great. Thank you. And so you, um, you know, we, we want you to be aware that there are so many specialty opportunities in the profession. Some of you may have your, um, your goals set 
on higher level advanced practice roles in nursing, things like a, you know, a, a nurse practitioner or a certified uh, nurse anesthetist or, um, you know, nurse researchers. There's so many um, advanced practice roles, but regardless of your, your long-term goals, the short-term goals really involve those undergraduate level uh, curriculum. Okay, so our program is 126 credits total. And since I can't, I don't think I can bring up the template, but it will, you will have access to what we call a template or a program plan. And after, you know, this meeting, you can kind of look at it. What, what I'd like to share is just a little bit about um, each year in your undergraduate program and the focus of that. And I share this with you, not to say I want you to memorize what the program looks like, but I want you to think about those courses that you're gonna take in the last semester of high school, you know, and um, just again, encourage you to really focus on your studies. I know that senioritis is real and it, it's, um, it's easy to kick back, but we start off uh, our freshmen, and please jump in, Brianne, I'm not trying to uh, dominate this conversation, but um, we start you off in your freshman year taking uh, AMP1, Anatomy and Physiology 1, and um, that's a heavy course, it's a lab course, and um, in addition to AMP1 with the lab, you would have um, 12 credits of core courses. So an example of your core courses in freshman year first semester would be uh, Psych 101, SOCH, um, possibly a core math class or um, a core science. In addition to anatomy and physiology, you would be required to do a three credit course science course. And that could be anything from astronomy to uh, chemistry. If you like chemistry, you could take another three credit course science class. And then in the spring semester of your freshman year, you would go right into taking anatomy and physiology two. Again, uh, probably the heaviest course for our freshmen. It's a challenging course. How many of you are currently or have already taken A and P? I'm currently taking AP Bio. Awesome. Joselina, are you taking? Are you taking AP? Yeah, I'm taking AP Bio and AP Psych. Okay, great. So, so then you would probably uh, be able to test out and come into the program with those credits if you have this, uh, you know, the score, correct? Anybody else, um, Caitlin or Annalise, are you taking any AP courses that you would want to test out of for freshman year? Yeah, I've taken like AP Psych um, last year, so I passed the AP exam, so I'd be able to transfer the credits for that. Awesome. Okay. Um, the sophomore year is where we start you uh, in the fall with a theories course. It's, it's Nursing 300, it's, it's a theoretical based three credit course that, I'm sorry, it's two credit course and it, it doesn't involve uh, clinical. But then in the spring of your sophomore year, we start you in clinical with um, Nursing 201 and that's a fundamentals course. It does have a clinical component so we might take you to um, a local nursing home where you have the opportunity to provide care to the residents in the nursing home. It is not an acute setting, but it, you know, we start uh, with very basic skills and move forward to complex skills. So uh, that would be in your sophomore year. In addition to that 201, which is a fundamentals course, you take pharmacology in your sophomore year. And that again is uh, what we call a cognate course. And the word that by that, I mean that 
there are several courses that we look at and we recognize that those cognate courses are absolutely critical for your success in the junior and senior year. And the cognate courses are anatomy and physiology, as I mentioned, microbiology, pharmacology. And, and we can sort of predict success in the upper classes based on those cognate grades. In your third year of the program, uh, this is where you're really fully immersed in the nursing courses and you have clinicals. I'll just briefly mention our clinical uh, component. There is four semesters of medical surgical nursing um, in, in between uh, junior year, first semester, second semester, and junior and senior year, first and second semester. So you'll have four courses in medical surgical nursing. Those include didactic or classroom information as well as clinical. We also have um, psychiatric nursing. We have in, in the junior year and uh, we have pediatrics in junior year. And then in senior year, you have your obstetrics, OB, clinical and class. And in senior year, you have your um, community health program uh, nursing course. So that's a lot I just shared with you. Um, please, please ask questions, okay? I, I don't know if that's necessarily important for you to know all that course information today, but I would be uh, very open to hearing any thoughts or questions, answering any questions that you have about courses or clinical. Yeah, Bridget. I actually have two questions. Good. So what is the NCLEX pass rate for your program? Right. So. Uh, I want to say that it was around 82% in May. Okay. And I also feel compelled to tell you that our pass rate the year before was 98%, and the year before that was like 97%. Uh, we de I'm, you know, we noticed a decline in the pass rate this year for our first time test takers. And we have um, a committee and um, we're actually exploring possibilities for why that happened. And I'm sure all of you can gather that part of it had to do with the COVID. Uh, we went out you know, in March and all of our coursework and clinical went virtual. So our students were doing uh, what we call virtual, you know, they were avatar programs for clinical. And so there was a tremendous number of clinical hours that were lost. Um, and it was, and I can speak for the senior class that graduated in May because I, I taught all of them it was so traumatic to uh, wrap up their senior year uh, remotely. And, and I'm sure that had something to do with our pass rate, but we are looking into it. We're doing some um, statistical kind of, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at it statistically and saying how many hours of clinical were actually lost. And, um, you know, what are the hospitals doing? So, so all of those students who passed the NCLEX, right, uh, the first time around, which was 82%, they're all now entering into the workforce and going through mentoring programs at wherever they're working, right? And so the hospitals too are saying, we have to make some changes as well because we're hiring individuals who, who lost a semester of clinical time. So, you know, th there's been this ripple effect. And so we're, we're recognizing it. We're certainly not alone across the country in terms of NCLEX pass rates in, in you know, May of 2020.
Also, how many students do you accept into the nursing program every year? We average about uh, 50 students per class. Sometimes it's a little bit higher, sometimes a little lower. I'm teaching currently in the junior class. There are 46 traditional junior students. We also have, you know, that doesn't include our accelerated evening program, uh, but traditional students right now are 46. So it averages for me, um, and Brianne, I don't, uh, you're, you're, you're with the juniors too, correct? I am, yes, I'm yeah, teaching so, physical assessment. Right, right, right. So it's, um, you know, I, I have a class of, uh, you know, 23 students in my didactic course. In my clinical sections, I have two clinical sections. I have seven students, so I am working, you know, with those individuals we affiliate at Geisinger uh, right now, and Geisinger Wyoming Valley Medical Center is a, is a level two trauma center in Wilkes-Barre, for those of you who are not from the area. So they allowed us to go back into the hospitals, into the acute care areas with our students beginning September 1. And it's been great. It's been really good to be back. The students are so happy. and. You know, yeah, so those are good questions. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, I do. Sorry, I have so many questions. Um, good. How many applicants do you receive for the nursing program each year? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't know exactly. So we admit about 50. I, I don't know that answer, uh, Bridget. We have, um, you know, the, the GPA requirement is right in front of me here. So our GPA uh, requirement is at least a 1040 with a minimum score of 480 in math and verbal uh, with a high school average of 80 or better. And a, a, we definitely look for that B in science and math courses. Those are critical, but I, I don't know the number of applicants and I can uh, certainly get back to you on that. Do you have the average ACT score? for the nursing students by any chance? Uh, 21. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So also just while we're talking about GPAs and scores, so anyone who finishes up their undergraduate work after you know four years with a GPA of 3.5 or better is automatically um, permitted to take graduate level coursework if you're interested in going further for your for your advanced practice degrees uh, at a discounted rate. So, did um, how many of you took took both the ACT and SAT? Two and. Uh, Caitlin, did you take, uh, what did you take? I took both. You did, and Joselina? I haven't been able to take them yet because my seat was like, you know, I was kicked out of my seat before I could take them. Okay. Okay. All right. What else? What else? Do they have, and, and this is a question that I don't know, um, do they have any kind of uh, study skills or test taking strategy courses in your school currently? Not, okay. Those are, those are sort of skills that we, uh, we see sometimes our students uh, excel if they've had like study skills or test taking strategies, but I'm not really aware of, of high school course opportunities. If that ever came up for you in the spring, even if it was a very short uh, six week thing, I would, I would encourage that. I, if there's anything on test taking or study skills, that is uh, something as an advisor that I notice my uh, freshmen, you know, they might feel a little bit less overwhelmed if they had 
uh, some kind of basic, you know, fundamental test taking strategy skills. So, uh, and I, uh, did you want to say, Bria? Yeah. I, I just wanted to say as a, an aside, um, I, Kathy had mentioned the packet that you will be receiving. Um, and, and I thought a really wonderful, when you see that, it's a little informational sheet. Um, and it gives you information exactly as Kathy was just speaking about how to prepare, you know, um, studying, keeping your, your GPA up, um, possibly, you know, getting uh, certified in CPR and basic life support. Um, if you have the opportunity to do that as well. Uh, but it also has a really great deal of information about nursing as a career. And I'm sure as you see right now, uh, the world still desperately needs nurses and it is a growing need right now that we need um, nurses. So it's a wonderful field to be getting in as far as uh, job security, job safety. And that, sh that informational spreadsheet just really has some nice info about um, different areas of nursing you can go into as well. And um, I can tell you now, I started my career as an LPN and then went back for my bachelor's at Wilkes University in Wilkes-Barre and um, recently uh, attained my master's and I'm still going. Nursing is a field where you don't know where life is going to take you and the opportunity to be able to, um, you know, take your bachelor's degree and continue on with that, possibly with a discounted rate at Misericordia, is um, something really nice. Um, and it's hard when you're just graduating high school to look at that long term yet. Um, but I just want to uh, do with that. Anyone have any questions about, uh, you know, nursing in, in general or, or different career paths? If you should uh, commit to Misericordia, we have uh, every freshman student is, a, is assigned to an academic advisor. And um, every faculty, every faculty has probably about 25 advisees and so um, that is a person that you will connect with as a first semester freshman that you will meet with every semester and it's an individual who's um, you know going to lead you down the course path and help not only with academic recommendations but just personal you know everybody goes through different uh, experiences as an undergraduate student, whether you're on campus or whether you're living off campus. And um, so it's an opportunity for you to connect with your advisor and really allow that person to guide you through four years of undergraduate coursework. What else? Um, I don't have Anything else, unless you uh, ladies have any questions uh, for, for Brianna or myself? I, um, I think all of the information that we've talked about is available in those handouts, so. Okay. Oh, I just have one last, oh, sorry, that's my dog. One last question. When is your uh, application deadline for nursing? Uh, Another question I have to check, application deadline. I don't know. I will, um, I will get back to you on that, Bridget, because that uh, I can email you that information. Okay, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, I just wanna say good luck to all of you. Um, enjoy, enjoy. Um, the remaining couple of months of your senior year have a good time it's it's really an exciting time and um, hopefully you'll have a live face-to-face -face graduation or has that already been talked about don't know um, but enjoy it and um, you know if you have any questions at all you can email uh, myself or Brianne 
and we'll get our email information out to you. All right. Well, have a great rest of the weekend. Do you still have another session on Zoom today? No. This is it? Yeah. Okay. Long, okay, lunchtime. <laughs> All right, everybody. Great. Have a good rest of the weekend. Thank